Question 5, Part A. Describe structural isomerism. Uh, so this is uh, quite common. Um, molecules with the same molecular formula. Uh, in order to describe or define uh, this isomerism, you must mention what is the same between the isomers. So they have the same molecular formula. And what is the difference? They have different structural formula. Molecular means the numbers of elements, they are the same. But the structural formula means the structure, they are different. Okay, part B. A and B are structural isomer with this molecular formula. They are both strict chain, just one functional group. And this one is the test to identify A and B. 2,4-DNPH, A and B both form orange precipitate. So it's telling us that A and B is, has carbonyl group. Second, Dolan's reagent, A forms silver mirror, so it's telling us that A, it must has the aldehyde group. And the B, no reaction, most likely telling us it's a ketone. And the last one is very important, okay, because from here, we roughly know the structure. Alkaline iodine means iodoform test. If a positive, then it will be a yellow precipitate. Okay. If negative means no change or no reaction. A and B, both no reaction, is telling us that the B okay, is the OA or NB. They both don't have this methyl ketone. So roughly we know that the structure and A uh, of A and B. Five carbon A is aldehyde. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we can put the aldehyde group on the terminals. So roughly we will know uh, this is the structure. And the B is a ketone. We have five carbon and the carbonyl cannot be second carbon, it must be the third carbon. Roughly, we know how it looks like. Okay, name the functional group for the both A and B, carbonyl group, functional group. Draw the structure of A and B. Now it's easy, like I told you just now. A is aldehyde, so it has uh, uh, this uh, CHO group continued by the straight chain, four carbon, CH3, CH2, 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 CHO. So this is the pentana. And this one, again, the carbonyl must be okay, at the third carbon. So therefore, this is the compound, right? This is the, uh, the ketone okay, that you should draw. Draw this or this, they are the same. Okay, so for part C, Okay, C is a structural isomer of A and B. Again, another structural isomer. C okay, is a strict chain, has two functional groups. And C only show one type of stereoisomer. Stereoisomerism, we have two types. So, one is a cis trans, another one is optical. And the table 5.2 telling us what is the C with the three tests. 2,4-D and pH, no reaction, telling us that okay, this one don't have carbonyl. So means most likely it will be alcohol. And bromine test, orange to colorless, telling us that this compound, it must have CC double bond. Alkaline iodine or oh, form yellow precipitate now. So we will know okay, it has methyl ketone or D 
this alcohol group. Since this compound C, no reaction for 2,4-DNPH, this methyl ketone is out. So the compound C must have this structure, this alcohol. And now we can deduce the structure easily. First, we put this structure, we start with this structure. Here already two carbon. So we put another three carbon here, one, two, three. Then we put the double bond between the carbons. Uh, there is one very important hint that let you know where the double bond it should be. Because it say that it just show one type of stereoisomerism. So from here, we know that this carbon is a chiral carbon. And this carbon bonded with one, two, three, four groups. So therefore, this compound C, it cannot be the, the CC double bond, it cannot uh, locate at this, this position. The CC double bond must be here. Okay, must be between this carbon, these two carbon. Because when the double bond okay, between these two carbon, this will not form cis trans. Okay, because this carbon now with two hydrogen, so no cis trans available for this structure, which meet the requirements for this. Okay, only show one type. Already has one type, which is optical, so it cannot have another one cis trans. That's why the double bond just can be here, cannot put here. Or it cannot put here. So these two places cannot put. We just put the double bonds here. So confirm this is the only structure. Once you know the structure like this, you can give this structure or you just draw the skeleton. Okay, because here never say that uh, the structure must be skeleton. So you can draw this structure or this structure, same. Okay, name the type of stereoisomerism shown by C. Okay, just now I told you already, it's optical. Okay, another uh, compound, D, reacts in the presence of sulfuric acid to form E and water. So this one, we uh, roughly know that it's going to be a condensation or acidification because water formation. And the structure of E means the product is shown in this figure, 5.1. Here we know that this is a cyclic ester. So we know that the compound D itself must has uh, the OH and COOH, alcohol and carboxylic acid together. Then it will self-react and form the cyclic. Okay, so in order to deduce what is the D, we can just do a very simple step. Okay, break this bond and you try to add H on this oxygen from OH, which is alcohol. And this carbon, you add another OH to form carboxylic acid, which it will look like this. Okay, so this one is a D. Which to form the E. Okay, name the functional group present in the E, which is this one E, is ester group. Identify the type of uh, reaction that occur when D reacts to form E. Of course, it's a condensation, I told you already. So it self-reacts okay, and remove a small molecules, water. Draw the structure of D. D already told you this is structure. You just need to uh, redraw it okay, to this structure. Okay, C here, the carboxylic acid. COOH here, CH2, CH2, CHOH, CH3. Right, same structure on this. So you just draw this D. Okay, IR uh, shown for E. Here, uh, 
here we know that again what is e eh? e is a cyclic ester d is the compound with oh and coh now the e is has a very strong absorption around 1700 so this one showing that it has carbonyl group it's ester right so now table is given need to use uh, some of the information to answer the question use figure 5.2 table 5.3 this table okay, to predict two differences in the absorptions above 1500 so you just need to use those uh, absorptions above 1500 okay so between the d and the e so what is their difference it, of course compound e it just has absorptions between 1710 to 1750 so this one is for the co double bond in ester right this one Okay, this one is the characteristic of the cyclic ester. D, you can give uh, two or three difference, or you just choose one of that. Okay, compound D has a broad absorption between 3200 to 3600, which is for the hydroxy. Hydroxy. Because we know that the D is has two groups, alcohol and the, the carboxylic acid. So this one, 3200 is specially for the alcohol, means the OH bond or the functional group, you just need to name hydroxy group. The, the name of the alcohol, the functional group we call hydroxy. Or you can actually uh, change slightly change it. It has a broad absorption between two thousand five hundred to three thousand, which is this one. Okay, and this one is from the carboxyl COOH, the OH in carboxyl. So which indicates a uh, OH bond in hydroxyl or carboxyl. If you put three thousand two hundred to three thousand six hundred, so you just name hydroxyl. If you put 2,500 to 3,000, then you just name carboxyl. Okay, that's all for this question. Thank you.